was, have you ever bought a tool or a car or anything that you thought would be a great addition to the shop or great project, but uh, it turns out they just shoved it over in the corner and uh, left it for dead? Well, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. This is a JD Squared Model 3 Bender that I picked up some time ago. Thought it would be an excellent addition to the shop. Thought I'd do, you know, custom bumpers and custom roll cages perhaps. But uh, unfortunately, I never got to use it. So today's video, we're going to take this part. We're actually going to convert it into a vertical tubing bender. This is my Model 3 JD Squared tubing bender. Um, I picked this up a couple years ago said it was going to be a pretty cool addition to have to the shop but I never really got to use it for any projects um, when I originally bought it, it actually came with this manual type setup that uh, has a telescopic type pipe onto it so you get the leverage but uh, once I had done a couple bends with that I realized that I would have liked to upgrade so I went with this air over hydraulic ram and this is what's giving me the issue it's not the bender itself, the bender itself is great um, for the amount of test bends I've done with it. I've never really done any amount of work with it. But I think the issue is um, it's not meant to be um, mounted horizontally. I think these are meant to be kind of vertical. So what I think is happening, I'm getting a lot of air bubbles, I'm getting a lot of air trapped in there. Um, sometimes it's very inconsistent coming out and definitely pulling it back in is a nightmare altogether. As you can see I have a ratchet strap kind of just bolted here, just giving some more uh, tension so it will close up on its own. Just kind of jigger, jerry rig that in place. Um, I tried a bunch of different things. Swag Off Road actually offers a really cool kit that you can weld together yourself or bolt together um, that you can mount one of these to the JD Squared. It's, that's what they designed it for. Being that I'm in Newfoundland and shipping cost a fortune, I decided to make my own, uh, just a piece of pipe, slipped inside. I cut it uh, on one side, just clamped it together with three bolts on this side. Worked great, gave me quite a bit of surface area here instead of pinching the outer tube of the hydraulic ram itself. Um, I tried different variations with this arm here, this point being longer, tried it being shorter, tried it on different angles, and I've just come to the conclusion that the ram is not supposed to be mounted horizontally. Got to go work with it. So, after some rummage around on the internet, I decided that uh, I like the vertical ones a little bit better. And if I make a base for it with some casters, I can roll around the shop, I can have it out in the middle of the floor, and it seems like it's more of a versatile tool that way. So that's what we're going to work on today. I'm first going to take all this apart, take all this off again, and uh, we're going to start with our base. side loaded or shifted at one point during his life but uh, I don't remember beating that in there like that so I annihilated the bolt and I'm definitely going to need a little bit more hardware but uh, we're going to work on the base as you can see pretty straightforward it's just a ping mechanism system we'll see later in the video once it's completed um, I'll do a test spin for you guys and see if we're cracking up the right tree or maybe we'll even have to go to hydraulic but uh, we'll see what happens we we'll get all this off the bench and we'll start making our base frame. So what we got right here is 3 by 3 by 1 8 wall square tubing, HSS, square structural, whatever you want to call it. Um, I actually had this for another job and I've never, I never cut it. It was actually behind the plasma table so it worked out perfect. Um, the one thing that we do have to remember right now when we're building this base, my plan is that this is going to sit vertically. So this is actually going to sit without pinching my fingers here. That's kind of going to sit on it like this now. So we're going to make two vertical pieces out of 3 8 plate. One that's going to mount here and one that's going to mount here. It's going to come down and actually sit in between these two pieces on our base. So these pieces here are going to run this way. That one there is going to run that way of course. So we need to take into account the overall width outside to outside here is going to be 5 inches and we have two pieces of 3 8 plate 
So 3 plus 3 is uh, 3 quarter. So what we're going to have to make sure is that our inside measurement in between these two pieces of HSS is going to be 5 and 3 quarter. Alright guys, it's time to do some layout. Um, this is where, this is obviously going to be our base frame right here. And as you can see, we're probably going to put a caster in all four corners, of course. Something like that. That's going to be the location of our casters. But the inside diameter, I guess you could call it inside, inside measurement that has to be here is overall five and three quarters because our overall width on our tubing bender is five inches. Plus we have two pieces of 3-8 plate. So 3-8 plus 3-8, that's going to give us three quarters. So we know we need five and three quarters overall distance in between here. And that's going to allow me to kind of move that tubing bender if I have to get it up here to get the proper angle on our ram. Maybe I get away with it in the center to get that angle. It all depends on clearances and that's something we're going to have to figure out uh, in the future of this build. But, not to get too ahead of ourselves, we need to get 5 and 3 quarters in between two of these HSSs. So that works out to 5.75. So half of 5.75 is actually uh, 2.875. So that works out to be 2 and 7 eighths of an inch in fraction form. And the reason we had to get that is because I want to get equal distance between the center of this piece of tubing and the edge of this, and that's going to the edge of this HSS, and that's going to tell me where to put this so I can tack it and do the same thing on that side, make sure everything's squared. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get half of this piece of tubing, which is 24 inches. And, guys, once again, if you really wanted to be dead, dead on with this, which I think we could be at a couple meals on something like this, this isn't a big deal. You could go ahead and get some blue marking paint and scrawl, and you can get that right to the millimeter if you really wanted to lay out that, that precise. But I don't think we need to do that here. So we're going to get center. We're off center here. So that's the center of this HSS, the square tubing. And what we're actually going to do now, and like I say, this is going to be off a little bit. I mean, we have essentially that's two mils of mark there, so it's not really dead on. But what we're going to do, we're going to go, I'm going to lay that out on 12 inches. And we're going to come out here 14 and 7 eighths, which if you take off 12 inches, that's going to be 2 and 7 eighths. Make it really confusing for you. And we're going to come back this way. And we're going to do the same. I think it's time for me to invest in a new tape. This one's kind of let me down. But This tubing is square with this tubing, and that's in the right location. We come back here, square off that edge, move our edge in, right around there ish. These are going to be our vertical pieces that make our tubing bender to our base frame. Um, 
Just brought over here to the mag drill. We got four holes in the drill, and that's going to be our bolt up for the tubing bender itself. So we're going to just do a couple holes here with the mag drill. I put extra bit of clamping force on this just because, just because. Pieces. Our base frame is going to go there. This here is going to sit vertically, of course, like that. Our base frame, of course, is over here. Now, this gives me the opportunity as well. If I want to brace this up in any way possible, no trouble to do it. But uh, our ram is actually going to sit right here in this opening. And our ram is actually going to sit right here. There's two dead holes here. And it's going to kind of bend like that. So, you're kind of picking up what I'm laying down right now. It, uh, it's kind of coming together a bit. Um, next thing I guess is, I'm not sure if I should mount the ram right now or if I should mount this to our base frame. Because if we mount it to the base frame and we mount it in the wrong place, we may not be able to use the ram. We may have to modify this cover part right again. So perhaps the best thing to do right now is to mount the ram to the base frame. And then we can kind of get a better idea of where this sits. I think that's the root of it. So for any of you guys that are kind of looking for an idea of how to mount a hydraulic ram, or if you even want to try the uh, air over hydraulic, this is how I actually went ahead and mounted it. As you can see, it's just a piece of pipe. Turned a little bit down, took a little bit of tolerance on the lathe just to make it a little bit easier to slide in. Just cut one side. I can't remember if I cut like half an inch out of the whole pipe. Can't really remember. But I went ahead and just cut the slot out of the pipe, cut these out on the table and just bolt together. At least that way the mountain kits that I've seen they were kind of just uh, clamped probably 3-8 plate and they were just kind of clamped in two parts and two places so I kind of thought that maybe that would crush the uh, outer skin of the hydraulic ram. So at least this way you get a little bit more uh, service here your boy to and clamp to and as you can see I never done any damage per se to the ram. Um, kind of done a number on the paint. So check this out. I went ahead, uh, my curiosity was getting the better of me and I just wanted to see how well it actually worked. Um, this is what you mean by a uh, vertical tubing measure. So now your dolly kind of goes in here, um, your radius kind of goes up here. But this, uh, it doesn't look like it's very tall right now, but you got to realize as well, um, there is a set of casters that's gonna to have to go on this. But the next step we're gonna actually have to do is I'm gonna make some ears or some mountain point right here to bolt our hydraulic ram. We're gonna need a couple um, lugs or some type of eyes to mount our ram to. Um, we're just gonna go into sheet cam and sheet cam actually has a bunch of basic shapes that's already, um, I want to say, in the software itself. So you can have all sorts of different basic shapes. You have your circle, uh, convex rectangles, your donuts, etc., etc. There's so many different things here. You have brackets and mounts, gussets, L gussets, web stiffeners for your I beams, and you have a bunch of cam locks and slotted plate, etc., etc. But what we're going to go into is brackets and mounts, and I think if we had a lifting lug. And if we're going to utilize that for a couple, a couple of, uh, I want to say, eyelets or ears or tabs, if you will, to mount our ram to. So, our width, uh, we know our pipe, uh, sorry, you know our HSS is only 3x3. Three three. So, right now the preset is 5.5. So, we're going to go, I think we went 2.5. That's going to give me a quarter each on each side if I had to move it one way or the other. Um, so, we'll go 2.5 width. Now, this is your base width. Um, your height, you only need probably a couple inches, so if we went two and a half inches, we're, uh, we're perfect. Uh, 6.2, inches. I believe that's the hole that's there anyways. I'll double check that. Um, the outside diameter, 
and that's got to give us a measurement so your hole from I want to say from this radius and this radius is two inches in the center um, if we went with probably one and a half oh hold on now we went what have I got done three 1.5, that's going to give us a little bit of a meat on each side. I feel if we went with a one inch, it's very, very, you know, you don't have very much meat or, uh, or material left by the time that hole is cut. So we'll go one and a half, that's going to give us a little bit more meat. Now our straight height, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, that's actually the height down here. And right now it's set at 0.18, um, which is, that, that's going to be fine for what I need. I can get a nice bead of weld around that. and. Uh, we're going to go with that. That's uh, pretty straightforward. And we're going to go add the current part. And come back here. And we have one. So now, if you want to go ahead, we can perhaps just cut this and do a test run and see if that one's going to work before I cut out two and waste material. All right guys, so it's actually the next day and uh, unbeknownst to me, my mic was after going dead and the camera actually had like 2% battery left into it. So I was kind of in the zone. I didn't want to wait around an hour for everything to charge back up to finish the video. So I went ahead and I just kind of finished it off. Um, spent a little bit more time. Um, it still is going to need a little bit more time to get some triangulation in there. I'll just uh, I'll show you guys what I mean. Here's the finished product. Um, of course, we have this foot switch here for the air over hydraulic cylinder. I do want to come in here and triangulate this probably back to here somewhere. Um, I went ahead, welded in our little tabs or our lifting lugs that you see me uh, cut out on sheet cam. And I just bent up this 316 plate just to kind of gusset it up a bit. Um, this is something that is yet to be seen because once again, this is an eight ton ram. Um, I don't know how much it would take to bend certain materials, certain wall thicknesses. Um, but if it starts flexing back here, because this is only one eighth wall um, square tubing. So if it starts flexing or something here, I'm gonna have to gusset it off a bit better and tie everything in. But for now, that is the finished product. As you can see, we're running a 1.25 die here. Um, this is your kind of your follower piece. And I'm gonna set up here. Um, unfortunately, all I have is uh, some aluminum tubing, which is not really the best. Um, someone reached out to me actually and said that we could get Durlin coated follower shoes, I guess you could call them. And uh, that makes it a lot easier for the tubing to kind of go through here because as it is bending, it's sliding on these shoes. And if you had Durlin, I think it would slide a lot easier and plus it wouldn't it wouldn't kind of scratch your tubing at all so that's the uh that's essentially 95 percent finished um i also went ahead and purchased this overhead door spring for a return spring that we could put here somewhere and probably mount back here and as it's you know as you made your bend and you're ready for it to close back up that would be enough tension to suck it back on itself but um, I come to find out yesterday when I was playing with this afterwards, it's only like a really little effort to kind of just push this back and everything kind of goes back exactly how it should. Now, if you remember a little bit earlier on in the video, I mentioned that I had, I actually had a ratchet strap kind of from this point back to the back here, because when it was mounted horizontally, you could crank on that uh, ratchet strap as hard as you can, and it would just barely just kind of jump and go in because I think it was airlocked. That's that's the only thing I can think of. I really sure, truly believe that it was airlocked, mounted horizontally. So let me just get, uh, I only have a little bit of aluminum tubing just to show you guys that uh, it works properly and I'll do a little demonstration of how it closes up. This is one eight wall, um, inch and a quarter OD. So uh, the one thing I found with aluminum tubing when it comes to this, you have to be really careful because it uh, kind of tries to squish and it wants to rip apart. I already uh, found that out the hard way last night when I was doing a test run, but this is just more so testing to see if anything flexes or out of shape or, but we'll do a quick little demonstration. I'm probably going to actually speed up the video because uh, it actually probably takes one full minute, minute and a half to get the whole stroke out. So we'll give it a shot. <laughs>
So if I'm being quite honest with you, I have never got this far with a 180. This is essentially a 180 where it's doubling on top of itself. So I don't really know how to get it out yet, but uh, bear with me. It's going to take some trial and error guys once again i'm learning but uh came out pretty good i must say for a pipe now that's only one eight wall but as you can see with the durlin the durlin uh coated followers would definitely come out a lot better but that's nothing a buffer wheel actually can't take care of got really bad there when we came up around there but a bit of lube i actually lubed it up a little bit with the uh, mig wire mig welding um, so that's actually going to be a wrap for the uh, machine. You may see it on another episode with uh, maybe I may have to make some modifications to it, but um, for the most part, I'm happy with how that turned out. When it was mounted horizontally, I could never get anything like that at all. It would just take I know that took quite a bit of time. That was probably a whole five minute bend to do that. Maybe two or three minutes actually. But uh, yeah, so that's a lot better. I'm really happy with that. May have to brace it up in the future, but uh, I think this will be a wrap for it.